This is lesson 20 in module 3, and we're going to be solving division problems without remainders using the area model. We're going to start with a rectangle with an area of 48, and we know one side is 4 units long. And we want to know what the other side is. So we're going to use what we know about the area model, we've seen it before with multiplication, to try to figure out the other side. We can do this by dividing the larger rectangle into smaller ones. So let's say we still have our side of 4, and if I look at the place values here, I see I have 40 and 8. And I know that 48 is 40 plus 8. And I think 40 is can be divided by 4. And 8 can also be divided by 4. So I'm rewriting 48 as 40 plus 8. And I'm going to figure out the other side of the two smaller rectangles. So if I have an area of 40 square units, one side is 4, I know the other side has to be 10, so this side is 10, because 4 times 10 is 40. I have a second rectangle that also has one side of 4, I know that 4 times 2 is 8, so this other side would be 8. So if I add these two sides together, I can get our missing side up here, 10 plus 2 is 12. So if I have an area of 48 and one side is 4, the other side would be 12. I can check with multiplication the length times the width. 2 times 4 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4, and I get back to my area. I can also show this is a number bond. So I have my total here, and I've broken down 48 into 40 and 8, and I've used the distributive property to separately divide first the 40 by 4, and then the 8 by 4, I'm distributing the 4 over both of these values. 40 divided by 4 is 10, plus 8 divided by 4 is 2, and I also get 12 by showing it with a number bond and distributive property. Let's look at another problem. Let's look at 96 divided by 4. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. <clears throat> whose area is 96 and one side is 4. <clears throat> now, if I look at displaced value, I have a 90 and 6, but I see right away I'm going to have a problem because I can't evenly divide 90 by 4. So how else can I break up 96 to make this easier to divide? Well, I could try 80 for one rectangle, because I know 80 divided by 4 is 20. If I use 80, then what I would have left is 16, and that works also, because 16 divided by 4 is 4. So instead of dividing 96 into 90 plus 6, I can divide it into 80 plus 16, and that makes the division easy. So this rectangle has an area of 80, one side is 4, so the other side would have to be 20, since 20 times 4 is 80. The second rectangle has an area of 16, this side is 4, so the other side needs to also be 4, since 4 times 4 is 16. And I can add these two together to get the length of this side, which is 24 units. 
I can also show this again as a number bond. I have 96 to start with and I've decomposed 96 into 80 plus 16 and I'm dividing by 4 so I'm going to distribute the, di the division by 4 over both of these separate numbers Eighty divided by four is twenty. Sixteen divided by four is four. And when I add them together, I get twenty-four. And I can check this with division. Twenty-four times four, that's what I divided by. Four times four is sixteen. Eight times two times four is eight plus one is nine. And I'm back to my original number. Let's look at this same problem in a slightly different way. In the previous problem, we took the whole of 96 and we divided it into parts. This time, we're going to try something different. This time, we're going to make the parts and add them together to make the whole. So again, I know I have a rectangle whose area is 96. One side is 4. And now, again, I'm going to divide the 96 so that it makes sense in terms of my uh, division. 4 times 2 tens would be 80. 4 times 3 tens would be tw 12 or 120, which I don't have that. I only have 9. So I know in each, if I have four groups and I have nine to start with, I could put two tens in each group of four. And if I put two tens in each group of four, I've used 80. So now what I have left is 16. And if I have four groups, I can put four ones in each group, four ones, four times would be 16. And now I've figured out my whole from the parts. So my whole here, my area would be 80 plus 16, 96. So for this one, we made the parts and we figured out the whole. In the prior example, we started with the whole and made the parts. Now let's see how this looks as our long division problem. So we have 96 divided by 4. So our thinking is very similar. We have 9 tens and 4 groups. And just like we figured out here, we can put 2 tens in each group. If we put 2 tens in each group, we've used 8 tens. We have 1 ten left plus the six ones. Now we have 16 ones. And again, just like we were looking here, we know if we have four groups, we can put four ones in each group. Four times four is 16. And when I subtract, there's no remainder. So I get a quotient of 24, just like here. Four, two tens plus three ones is 24. So 96 divided by 4 equals 24. Same answer we got from the prior one, except in this situation, we worked from the parts to the whole. Let's go on and look at some problem set. OK, for number 1. It says Alfonso solved a division problem by drawing an area model. So we look at his model. What division problem did Alfonso solve? Well, we know that the area is what becomes our dividend. That's the whole we're dividing up. And this rectangle has an area of 40. This has an area of 32. 
So together, it's an area of 72. And we've divided it by 4. One side is 4. And at the top, we found the other sides were 10 and 8. So 10 plus 8, our quotient would be 18. Here, we're showing a number bond to represent Alfonso's area. So we said he started out with 72. It's to start with a total, which we did, and then show how the total is split into two parts. It was split into 40 and 32. And we're dividing by 4, so we separately, with the distributive property, we did 40 divided by 4, and then we did 32 divided by 4. So we're distributing the division by 4 over both uh, parts of 72. When we get 40 divided by 4, we get 10. 32 divided by 4 is 8. And when we add them together, we get 18, just like we did up here. Okay, pause the video and you try number 2. Okay, so we're going to solve using an area model. We know that the area is 45 and one side is 3. So we want to think how can we divide 45 up so that we can easily divide by 3. Well, I know 15 divided by 3 is an even. So if I use 15 here, then I would have 30 left from 45, and that works also. Both of these are divisible by 3. So 3 times 10 equals 30. 3 times 5 equals 15. And if I add these together, I get this side being equal to 15. I can also use a number bond. We start out with our total. We divide it into 30 and to 15. We're using the distributive property and we're going to divide each one by 3 since that's our divisor. We're also dividing 15 by 3. 30 divided by th 3 is 10 plus 15 divided by 3 is 5, and we get 15. Okay, you try number 3. Okay, here we have a uh, rectangle with an area of 64 and a side of 4. So again, we're looking for ways we can divide up are 64 into ways that will make it easy to do the division. Well, I know 4 times 10 is 40. If I put 40 here, I'm left with 24. 24 is also divisible by 4, so that's going to work for me. So this rectangle has an area of 40, so the other side has to be 10. 10 times 4 is 40. This rectangle has an area of 24, so this side needs to be 6. If I add these together, I get a quotient of 16. I can also show it as a number bond. We started out with 64. We partitioned it into 40 plus 24, because that made it easy to do the division. We used the distributive property and we divided each of the partitions part that we made by 4. And we get 10 plus 6 equals 16. And it also tells us to write this in the, a written method. So let's do our long division, 64 divided by 4. And we see that we can put 110 in each group, and we end up with four tens. There's our four tens right there. 
We have two tens left. That two tens becomes 20. We add the four ones that are already there. And there's our 24. Four times six is 24. So when we multiply those together and subtract, we get zero remainder. And we now have gotten the same answer three different ways. You try number four. Okay, here we have an area model with an area of 92 and one side is four. Again, we're looking for a way of dividing or partitioning 92 so it's easy to divide by four. Let's try 80. That's easy to divide by four. If I use 80 here and I started with 92, that leaves me with 12. Both of those divisible by four. So if my area is 80, one side is four, the other side has to be 20, since 20 times four is 80. In this second triangle, uh, rectangle, one side is four, so the other side has to be three, since three times four is 12. If we add those together, we find that the other side must be 23. Now, explain using words, pictures, or numbers the connection to the distributive property. So what we've done here is we've broken uh, 92 into two pieces. And then we've div divided each one of these separately by four. So we've distributed the division by four over both of the numbers that add together to equal 92. And then we get 20 plus three, which is the same numbers we have up here. And we get a total of 23. So we can show this with either the area model or the distributive property. You try number five. This says to use the area model and then the standard algorithm. So if we're dividing by 6 and our area is 72, again, we're looking for easy ways to divide this number. So 60 is easily divisible by 6. So if I take 60 away from 72, I'm less with 12. 60 plus 12 is 72. So for this, rectang this rectangle, if the area is 60 and one side is 6, the other has to be 10. Length times width equals area. If for this rectangle, if the area is 12 and this side is 6, the other side has to be 2. If I add these together, this side is 12. In our standard algorithm, our total area, our dividend, is 72. We're dividing it by 6. We can put 110 in each group, just like we did here. 10 times 1 is 6 tens, or 60. When we subtract, we have 110 left, plus the two ones. Now we have 12 ones. 12 ones divided by 6 can be, is 2. 2 times 6 is 12 and we have no remainder. So we've shown this with both the area model and the standard algorithm. And that's the end of lesson 20.